In this video, we're going to discuss a simple mnemonic device for drawing molecular orbital diagrams for monocyclic fully conjugated molecules like cyclobutadiene, benzene, so on and so forth. This device only works for monocyclic compounds, but it's highly useful because it allows us to understand the molecular orbital basis of aromaticity and anti-aromaticity. Drawing these molecular orbital diagrams and filling them with the appropriate number of pi electrons reveals the ultimate electronic origins of aromaticity and anti-aromaticity. Before showing the device, it's worth pointing out that the energy levels of cyclic, planar, and fully conjugated hydrocarbons do follow a predictable pattern. Let's start with the smallest possible molecule, consisting of a three-membered ring. Just to make it aromatic, let's take one of the electrons out. And the thing to notice here is that the positions of the orbitals on the orbital energy diagram form the shape of a triangle just like the shape of the molecular structure, as long as we place one of the vertices of the ring down at the bottom. In fact, we're going to observe the same thing going on for the four-membered case. When I draw the molecule like this, with one of its vertices down, we can see that the shape of the orbital energy levels on the diagram forms a diamond, which is the same as the shape of the molecular structure, as long as one of the vertices is placed at the bottom. Moving to the five-membered case, we're going to see the same thing. The molecular orbitals form the shape of a pentagon on the orbital energy diagram, and the molecular structure has the same shape, again, as long as we place one of the vertices of the molecular structure, one of the atoms, at the bottom. This correspondence between the way the energy levels are laid out on the orbital energy diagram and the molecular structure suggests a relatively simple mnemonic for going from the molecular structure of a cyclic, fully conjugated hydrocarbon to its orbital energy diagram. This is what we call the frost circle, and here's the basic idea. What we're about to generate is an orbital energy diagram, which is why I have an energy axis on the left-hand side of the slide. The first step of drawing a frost circle is to start with the molecular structure and place one of its vertices at the bottom. After you've done that, draw a circle and inscribe the molecular structure within the circle. Here we're dealing with benzene, which is a perfect hexagon. And so inscribing benzene in the circle would look something like this. At each point where the inscribed structure hits the circle, we have an orbital energy level. Notice how these corners correspond to the atoms within the molecular structure. Both of them form the shape of a hexagon. To place the levels, we just draw horizontal lines as we would on any orbital energy diagram. And then the last thing we want to do is fill with electrons based on the number of pi electrons implied by the molecular structure. Benzene has six, and so we're going to start at the bottom in accordance with the Aufbau principle and fill up from there. And that's it. We've just drawn a molecular orbital energy diagram for benzene using a very simple mnemonic device. One thing that's worth mentioning is that this line that divides the circle in half is the non-bonding energy level, the energy corresponding to a bare atomic 2p orbital. And so the frost circle also helps us see which orbitals are bonding and which are anti-bonding. This method works equally well for ions as long as they're monocyclic and only hydrocarbons. Here we have a regular pentagon, and we're going to place this shape in the circle with the vertex of the pentagon pointing down. Here it is, and at each point where the shape touches the circle, we have an orbital energy level. Once we've laid those down, we can begin filling with pi electrons. This structure has six pi electrons, two each from the pi bonds and one from this lone pair, and notice here that the molecular orbital energy diagram helps us see why this molecule is aromatic. All of its bonding molecular orbitals are filled, all of its antibonding levels are empty. I'll go through this last example fairly quickly. From this orbital energy diagram, we see very clearly why this molecule is anti-aromatic, as it contains two unpaired electrons in antibonding molecular orbitals. 